town. Ten cents a dance, pansies and rough guys, tough guys who tear my gowns. Seven to midnight I hear drums, loudly the saxophone blows. Trumpets are tearing my eardrums, customers crush my toes. Sometimes I think I burn my hero. But it's a queer romance All that you need is a ticket Come on, big boy, ten cents a dance Rushing you. What's a guy got to do to dance with you, gal? All you need is a ticket and some courage. We got both. How about it, sister? Shove off. I'm great. Only as long as you're passing rules every five minutes, I've got a new one for you. What is it? Keep people out of here that weigh over 200 pounds. It gets to be quite annoying. I'm sorry, Miss O'Neill, that you don't like our patrons. Possibly they don't compare with the gentlemen you know. What do you mean? I mean that you mustn't let your private life interfere with your work here. Private life? I've got no more private life than a goldfish. What are you talking about? About the young man you're always talking about. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him. And you're not going oh, to. Oh, that's too bad. If he's half as wonderful as you say he is, he must be perfect. But you mustn't let him interfere with your work. He doesn't even know where I work. Nevertheless, he has interfered. Your work used to be the best on the floor. You took an interest in it, but you don't anymore. What's wrong with it? No animation. No uh, rhythm. 
if I get any more rhythm, I'll dislocate a hip. The gentlemen like rhythm. I don't want to speak to you about this again. Rhythm. What's the matter, Lee? Oh, gee, I gotta run to my stockings. Pay two bucks a pair for them and they last a split second. Take them off. Nobody will know the difference. Gee, that's an idea. Oh, gee, there goes my dress. What do I do about that? Use your own judgment. No way, Joe. It won't be necessary. Yes, Mr. Cobb. Say, for the love of Mike, don't you get enough woofing out there? Well, I haven't danced out there yet. You're new, aren't you? Yeah. I'm awful nervous. What about? Oh, well, Mrs. Blanchard. She talks so funny. I couldn't quite make her out. Mm. She talked to you about how to dance out there, didn't she? Yeah. She told me to be very careful. And yet she sort of gave me the idea she wanted me to be not so careful. She told me, uh, well, to be intimate, but ladylike. Now, what do you make out of that? She told me I could just feel my way along until I got the hang of things, but to watch my step. Gee, I mean, what's a girl to do? Search me. Say, how old are you? Uh, 18. Mm -hmm. You mean you told Blanche you were 18? She's all right. Yeah, he beat the cops till he grabbed the taxi cab and got away. Great, I'm glad of it. Oh, see, I could have sworn that fellow was just a drop in. Turned out to be a regular. Ah, uh, he only bought one ticket. One of those nickel nurses. No, I don't think so. Say, you're crazy. That's the guy to get Barbara O'Neill that hundred dollars. I'd much rather sit and talk with you, if you don't mind. That's a break. Come on. I'm afraid the old dowager doesn't like me. Who is she? Oh, she's got the toughest job of all. She's a matron. She's got to keep the place hot enough to avoid bankruptcy and cold enough to avoid raids. Hey, you know, we're not allowed to sit out dances unless drinks are served. Oh, I wouldn't break a rule for anything in the world. Waiter. Come on. Milk. Milk? Do we have to drink milk? No. Two milk and drink them yourself. You're sober tonight, aren't you? Wasn't I the other night? Oh, you was. You're sober tonight, aren't you? Wasn't I the other night? Oh, you was swell. You gave me a hundred dollars just for sitting here and talking to you. Do you want it back? No. It was well worth it. And I'm going to keep on coming here until I find out how you happen to be here. 
There it goes. What are you doing, writing a book? Listen, I'm here because my brains are in my feet, and you're here... Well, I'm glad you're here. And you missed me, eh? Yes. That is... Yes, I did. And there's something I want you to do for me. Oh, yeah? You're in business, aren't you? Sure, I'm a night watchman. This must be your night off. No, no kidding. You've got an office of some kind, haven't you? Yes, I've got an office of some kind. Well, I was wondering if you had an opening of some sort. You want a job? Oh, no, it's not for me. It's, uh, well, it's for an acquaintance of mine. He's an awfully bright fellow and very well educated. Really? Uh-huh. I'll vouch for him. Of course, he hasn't been around long, and the traffic signal's kind of puzzling. Are you but... sure that he's just an acquaintance? Positively. Oh, he's only a kid. All right. Send him around. Gee, thanks a lot. And now, what can I do for you? I want you to have dinner with me some night, will you? Sure, where? Any place you say. Any place where there isn't any music. I'm sick of the sound of that stuff. Gee, it follows me home and pounds into my head like a hammer. Do you know what I'd do if I had a lot of money? Yes, buy a radio. No. I'd get that cornet player and tie him up. And I'd hire a million saxophone players to blow blue notes in his ears till he died. Shall I call you up at your home? No, you better call me here. Well? I was just trying to figure you out. Can't you? You're so wise. You've been here three times and you haven't propositioned me once. Is that unusual? It's impossible. Gee, I'd better be getting back. That old dame will be right on top of you. And you'll call me here? Yes, certainly. <clears throat> Goodbye. Bye. By the way, what's the number here? Oh, it's at 4027. It's in the book. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, bookworm. Oh, hello, Miss O'Neill. Oh, don't get up. That must be a good book to keep you up so late. <laughs> it is. It's a swell book. I, I must have fallen asleep or something. You're not used to keeping such late hours, are you? No, I... I wanted to see you before I left. Before you left? Do you mind seeing if the landlady is still up? Sure. That old bird never goes to sleep. Would you mind sitting down for a minute? I want to see you before I left. The landlady doesn't know it, but I'm leaving tonight. What for? Well, it's just a matter of assets and liabilities. Assets? Some socks, some underwear, and a couple of shirts. Oh, and liabilities? Sixty bucks for three weeks room and board. I'd have been it a couple of hours ago, only I wanted to say goodbye. I suppose it's a dirty trick, my sneaking out like this, but I haven't the courage to face Mrs. Crane in the morning. I know how it is. I've been there myself. Of course, I, I know some people here in town, but I wouldn't want to go to them because I, I wouldn't want them to know how things are. Where do you go from here, Eddie? Follow my nose, I guess. They tell me the park isn't a bad place this time of year. Oh, well, after all, it's just a matter of mathematics. I... Oh, sixty dollars, and I haven't got sixty cents. I have sixty dollars. Oh no, no, no! I don't know. Here. I... Well, that's a hundred dollars. Sure, it is. That's sixty for Mrs. Crane, and the rest will take care of you for a couple of weeks. Anything's liable to happen in that time. Oh, I couldn't think of taking it. Why not? Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their party. You know, us rumors has got to stick together. Oh, gee, Miss O'Neill. Listen, if you're going to owe me money, it's Barbara. Gee, Barbara. Never mind. Now tell me all about it. I oh, I don't like to do this. I, well, there's nothing much to tell. I, I thought I could trim the town overnight. Trim me instead. Trimmed you? You haven't even started yet. Gee, you're one swell human being. 
I'm going to take this hundred dollars, and I'm going to pay it back. Maybe it's a good investment. I know it's a good investment. You know, Eddie, there's only one way to beat a hard-boiled town like this. It ain't how hard you can sock, but it's how hard you can take it on the chin. Maybe I haven't got a chin. Sure you have a nice chin and a nice face. You're young, Eddie. You're strong, and you've got a good college education. And you've got a job. Job? Uh-huh. A friend of mine runs a big business, and I was talking to him today about you. He thinks there might be an opening in his office for you. Oh, gee, Barbara, you're saving my life. Nix, I'm just trying to protect my investment. And if you're going to thank me any longer, I'm going to sock you right in the nose. Oh, well, I... Well, all right. But I want you to take my IOU. Oh, don't be silly. Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of taking this much money without giving you some kind of security for it. hundred dollars? There. Okay. And so to bed. <laughs> I'm not going to try to thank you anymore, because I don't know how. You'll never know what you've done for me. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Good night, Barbara. Good night, Eddie. Good night. He's not well. That kind of music makes you feel like laughing and crying and I don't know what. A little of both. Let's come here every night. Uh-uh. Remember, I'm a working girl. That's so. You never have told me anything about what you do. Where do you work? Oh, in a dancing school. What do you do there? Why, um, I'm one of the teachers. But let's not talk about my work. Let's talk about yours. How's it going? Well, it's pretty hard to tell the first few days, but it looks great. What do you do? I'm in the accounting department, but that's only temporary. Sure it is. All you needed was a break. And you got it for me. See that bench over there? That might have been my bed the other night if it hadn't been for you. Ah, oh, you certainly have been my good angel. Angel. That's what I said. Angel. You know, Barbara, it, it seems like a different world. What? I... I felt the same way the first time I met you, too. Yeah? Gee, this place was just a city of millions of strangers when you came along. Isn't that funny how you go along and you meet all kinds of people and then all of a sudden you... I don't know, you... You meet somebody and it just changes the whole world. just brought this. It's good form to rise when an older woman addresses you. It's against the rules. A messenger just brought this. It's good form to rise when an older woman addresses you. It's against the rules to have packages come here. But I let it go this time. Thanks. She gives me a pain. I want to take her to the convention. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gee, that's a snappy-looking bar. Anyway, gee, I wonder what it means. Oh, 
Excuse me, uh, does Miss O'Neill work here? O'Neill? Oh, Barbara O'Neill. That's right. Yeah, she's up there. Thanks. It's just one thing after another. What's the matter? She was actually ogling that man with whom Eunice was dancing. Now they've gone up on the balcony. Sit here, Eddie. I don't want to sit down. Dancing school. What did you want to come here for? I want to see you. How did you find out where I was? The landlady told me. Come on, let's get out of here. I can't, not until one o'clock. I work here. Oh, no, you don't. Not anymore. You're not going to stay in this dump another minute. Oh, it isn't as bad as all that, Eddie. I'm just one of the hostesses. It's worse. Otherwise, you wouldn't have lied to me. I didn't lie to you. I just didn't go into detail. Miss Blanchard, I want to talk to you. I you don't have to say a word about it. I saw the whole thing. She took your part away. Yes. Come on, Casey. I may need you. But Eddie, I'm telling you that... Don't argue with me. I don't want you in a place where anybody with ten cents in his pocket can take you in his arms and dance with you. Hey, don't get so excited. Everybody's looking at us. You go and I'll meet you after I'm through tonight. You're through now. I won't have you in here. I don't want the girl I'm going to marry to work in this... What? Say that again. I don't want the girl I'm going to marry to work in this sort of a place. I want you to tell them right now that you're going to quit. Tell them? I don't have to tell them. Come on, let's go. Miss O'Neill? It's against the rules for you to stand here talking to a customer during your dance. If you expect to work here. She's not going to work here. Let's throw. Stay out of these arguments. Trick your hands off me. Ah, what do you all mean? You want to get first. Oh, let me go. Let me go. Fiber, let me get by. Well, you want to start Hey, you big game. Why don't you put my thumb on your own side? Come on, oh, hey, wait a minute, sister. I'm handling these people up here. Don't let go of it. Hey, let go of it. Don't let go of it. Don't you 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 let go
Don't touch it. Now hold that. I had no right busting in on you like that. I acted like a fool. No, you didn't. You acted grand. I'm glad you did it. It may sound like preaching, but it's just being selfish. Barbara, I want you for myself. I don't want to share you with a lot of other people. There aren't any other people. There's just you. I guess I can find a job someplace else. Oh, no, you won't. I guess I'll be able to support a wife. Can you imagine getting married with a black eye? Hello, Barbara. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Carlton. Can I take this box? No. No, I'll carry it. Let's sit down. I'm sorry. Did I keep you waiting? Oh, that's all right. I came just as soon as I got your phone call. I was glad you wanted to see me and a bit curious. Yes, I, I wanted to see you about the dress. Do you remember what I said on that card? Uh-huh. To wear to dinner whenever you get hungry. Aren't you hungry? Yes, but not that hungry. Oh. I see what you mean. Would you pardon me? Will you check this, please? Yes, sir. Well, what's this for? A souvenir. You may change your mind someday. Shall we have dinner? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I can only stay a minute. I'm sorry. But I can use that minute. I went down to the dance hall last night looking for you, but you weren't there. No, I don't work there anymore. Good. You know, I hated to see you working in a place like that. Having to dance with all those men. Oh, well. When you've danced with them as long as I have... They all sort of blend into one. What's he like? Well, he mauls you around and steps on your toes and tears your dresses and breathes into your face. He's got a pocket full of dimes and only one idea in his head. Am I like that? No, I can't make you out. You know, when you gave me that hundred dollars, it was the first time in my life I ever took something for nothing. But it wasn't something for nothing. I believe in paying as I go along. Maybe you're right. I know I'm right. That brings me back to what I wanted to tell you last night. I'm going abroad on business. Paris, London, Yokohama, Calcutta. The trip will take a year or more. Seven seas in the far corners of the earth. It'll be a lot of fun. I, I was hoping that you would come along. By that time, you might learn to know me and even like me. Why, I like you now. I, I've always liked you. In the seven seas, I, I've always liked you. In the seven seas. Gee, I've never even seen a lake. But it's like the dress. I'm sorry. Also decline with thanks, huh? And regret. Well, I... I guess I'd better be going. When am I going to see you again? Well, you see, I... I, um... I think I'm going to get another job someplace, and I don't think I'll be able to see you again. 
I'm going to miss you. I hope you're happy in your new work. I know I will be. Goodbye, Mr. Carlton. Goodbye, Barbara. hard. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Thanks for the tea. Uh-huh. Did you ever call up the office to find out if he is working? No, why should I? Child, how long have you been married? Eighteen weeks. I've been married eighteen years and there's tricks to all trades. It's a good thing to call up the office when your husband is working overtime. But just to cheer him up. Paper, paper. Oh, I beg your pardon. Why, oh, well, Eddie? Where me? Where in the world? How are, are you? I'm glad to see you. <laughs> oh, you remember my sister Nancy? You better say you do. Why, of course I do. <laughs> Ralph used to bring you up to the college to dances. What a memory. How could I forget? I haven't seen you since we graduated. What are you doing? Why, uh, why I'm in business with uh, Brad Carlton. We have offices here in this building. Oh, how nice. Up and coming, eh? That's great. Married? Me? Not a chance. I've been waiting for Nancy to grow up. <laughs> Haven't lost that famous line, have you, Eddie? It's a gift. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, but I mustn't keep you, folks. Oh, we're in no hurry. Just going home. Say, why don't you come along to dinner? We're having some people up. Oh, thanks, but I couldn't. I... Oh. Well, I'm not dressed. Oh, don't be silly. Well, that doesn't matter, does it? Why, of course not. Come on. We're having a snappy little bridge game afterwards. Gee, I haven't played bridge in months. I'll probably lose my shirt. Oh, surely a big businessman like you has another shirt. <laughs> oh, perhaps you have another date. None that I wouldn't break for you. <laughs> oh, I'll say that line of yours is a gift. <laughs> Bring him along, Ralph. Oh, and that's all. And that's well, it looks like you're down. Oh. <laughs> Too bad for you and Eddie, Nancy. That's the network perfectly. Oh, Why in the world didn't you play that A? Oh, please, please, please. Well, are you lucky that you're a bachelor? Stay a bachelor. Sir. Stay. Stop giving him such rotten advice. <laughs> <laughs> Better luck this time, Eddie. Partners? Oh, no. Let's stay as is. We'll beat them this time, Eddie. I'll no. try to bit my hand this time, Never. Nancy. Attaboy, Eddie. That's a good idea. Shall I shuffle? There we go. I'll deal you a good hand. Hmm? While you're at it, please give me something worthwhile playing. Going to give all four aces to my partner. There. I guess that's about right. Oh, but we had 80 on us instead of 40. That's what wrong. Oh, no. You, you oh, I forgot the jack. Mm. I never had such an unlucky streak in my life. I couldn't get a hand. One of those off nights, I guess. Yeah, it would happen when I was playing for five cents a point. <laughs> Say, Ralph, I, I'm a little bit short this week. You know how the market's been acting here lately. And mm, been playing the market, eh? Well, a little flyer here and there. Now, listen, Eddie, you're a sucker to buy stocks without expert advice. Why don't you come to me? That's my business. I'll put you next to some hotland. Well, thanks, old man. I'll remember that. I'll give you a ring the first good tip I get. Well, that's great. Say, Ralph, I... Uh, about my losses tonight... Do you mind if I give you my IOU? Oh, forget it. Oh, no, really. Mm, well, if it'll make you feel any better. Certainly will.
Oh, my goodness, that he scared me to death. Can you use an assistant bookkeeper? What's all this? That's none of your business. You attend to your affairs, and I'll attend to mine. What is that? Corned beef and cabbage. Smell of cheap cooking. Did you have dinner out, honey? No, I was too busy. But I had some nice apple pie left over and coffee. Would you like some? No, thanks. I, uh... I had dinner with some friends of mine in town. Oh, tell me about it. Who were they? Well, uh... It was just business. You wouldn't be interested. I've got to get myself some dinner clothes. I was the only one there who wasn't dressed. Gee, I'm dying to see you in dinner clothes. Oh, it isn't that. Only if you want to get up in the world, you've got to know the right people. If you want to know the right people, you've got to dress up for it. It's simply a matter of business. I'm going to hit Carlton for a raise. I think I deserve one. Gosh, a raise would be nice, wouldn't it? I'll get it. If I don't, something will turn up. Something's got to turn up. Oh, I know what you've been doing. You've been trying to make two and two equal five. And the funny part of it is two and two do equal five. That is if you finagle around long enough. I played you a dirty trick when I asked you to marry me. Yes, I'll never forgive you. No, I mean it. A man has no right to get married unless he can support a wife. Have you heard any complaints from the junior member? Mm, that's why I feel so rotten about it. You never complain. Oh, forget it, darling. You know, if you asked me to make three wishes, I couldn't think of anything in the world I would want right now. Yes, I could, too. What's that? Dinner clothes for you. Now, what's the use of talking about it? Let's forget about it, Barbara. Oh, don't touch that! My goodness, the paint is still wet. What's the idea? Why all the camouflage? Oh, the room looked kind of dark, and I thought I'd brighten it up a little. What's the use of trying to change brown monstrosities into pink monstrosities? I wish we could move out of this dump. It's driving me crazy. girls at the Palais de Dance. Uh-huh. Well, I just thought maybe you might be interested to know that we have one of our own girls back on the job. Oh, no. She's not here steady. No. <laughs> just once in a while. Oh. Oh, no. No, no. She doesn't know I'm calling. No. <laughs> no, I've got no special reason for calling. No. Except that when I'm not dancing, I'm a Girl Scout. And this is my good deed for the day. Yeah. Oh, don't mention it. Barbara, this old mama won't come home for supper tonight. I told her I was going out with you. You didn't tell her that... Oh, no, no. I don't want anybody to know I've come back here. Say, I'm a Girl Scout. Keep my trap shut. How's it feel to be back? I hate this place. Oh, it's a swell way to pick up a little loose change. It's only until Eddie gets a raise. Why can't you tell Eddie? Why can't you tell Eddie you were from here? If I told Eddie, he'd die. Oh, it's not that bad. Gee whiz, it's legal. You gonna stick around? Yeah, Eddie's gonna go to the convention. Convention? How do you know? How do I know? He told me. Oh. And the poor kid had to rent a dinner suit. My, how nice you look, Eddie. You know, it's the first time I've seen you in a dinner suit. The, uh, the first time I've worn it. My old one was all shot. Mm 
What time do you want him, sir? Uh, just tell him to wait. This is the place, is it? Oh, yes, this is the place. The music. Oh, the music's divine. So soft you can hardly hear it. Let's go. All right, let's <laughs> Oh, darling. What's this? Oh, that. Oh, we always have smallpox around in the first of the month. Saves a lot of time with the collectors. Collectors? What for? Do we owe any money? Oh, not much. A little here and there. But don't you worry about it. Well, why did you say something about it before? First time I've heard anything about it. Who are you telephoning? I was trying to get you at the office. At the office? What for? Well, I wanted to find out when you'd be home for dinner. How many times have I told you never to telephone me at the office? You never can tell when those switchboard girls are listening in. But suppose they do listen in. They're liable to find out that I'm married. Are you ashamed of it? Oh, no, of course not. That's this place I'm ashamed of. Things like that. Oh, I know. I know I'm a piker. I don't make much. But it seems to me like $40 a week ought to keep a dump like this going. Well, it, it would, Eddie, only you don't give me 40 a week. What do you want me to do? You want me to walk to work? Will I help any if I give up cigarettes? I've got to have something to keep going on, don't I? Well, you see, last week, you took the... Yeah, last week, I got myself a dress suit. I had to have one. I need clothes. So do you. What's happened to your hair? Well, I guess the last permanent wave I got wasn't so permanent. Uh, marriage oughtn't to make people sloppy. Oh, what's wrong with you, Eddie? What's eating you? Come on and tell me. You wouldn't understand. There's a lot of things I don't understand. When we were first married, I wanted to hire a radio station and broadcast it to the world. And you act as though marrying me was some sort of a crime. What's that? What kind of a house is this? Oh, the house is all right. I, I guess the light company figures that people with smallpox don't need any light. Now, call them up and tell them a few things. Information. Don't bother, Eddie. They're only interested in one thing. Why we haven't paid the light bill in the past two months. Well, why haven't we? If you pay attention to these things instead of spending all your time trying to paint a lot of junk pink. Oh, don't cave in like that, please, Eddie. I don't mind the lights going out. It's fun. Uh, All these silly little troubles. D don't you worry about it. I'll go down in the morning and pay the bill. Oh, uh, what's the use? Maybe it's better if we don't have any light around here. It hides all the ugly things. Ugly? There's ugly. Ugly, ugly. Everything's ugly around here. A fine place to come home to after I worked hard at the office all day. Well, I'm here all day. I don't mind it. Well, I do. I'm going out. Uh, I forgot to tell you, Mrs. Carney invited us in for dinner tonight. No, thanks. It's bad enough smelling that junk without trying to eat it. Well, where are you going? I don't know. Anywhere. Anywhere, just so I can get the taste of this place out of my system.
Hello? Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Where are you phoning from? The office. Well, what's wrong? Shortage. How much? Any idea who? What are you doing? What's wrong? Everything. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of town. Why? What happened? I'm in a jam. If I'm not out of here in 48 hours, it's all up with me. What have you done? I borrowed some money from the office. I thought I could pay it back. But they're looking over the books tomorrow. And I... Oh, Barbara, I gotta get out of here, I tell you. Hey. How much money did you take? Well, the first time it was a thousand. And they kept asking me for more. And Why? I... Margin, margin. Oh, so, <laughs> you wouldn't understand. Now it's... Now it's five thousand. If I had a gun, I'd kill myself. Five thousand dollars? What did you do with the money? It was the market. I didn't think there was any risk. There were a lot of big bankers in on it. I got the tip from my pal, Ralph Sheridan. I... It was you I wanted it for, Barbara. Me? I didn't need anything. I never asked you for anything, Eddie. I know what you were thinking. I've watched you. You didn't know I was looking. Oh, I wanted you to live in the right kind of a home, have the right kind of clothes. I wanted you to have everything. But I had everything, Eddie. Now, now you're married to a thief. Well, I'm glad we kept that wedding a secret. You'll be all right. You won't be mixed up in it. Yes, I will. If there's anything come, coming to you, I want half of it, good or bad. You mean it doesn't make any difference? Sure it does. It makes this much difference. You're in trouble and you need me. Oh, what good am I to you now? Oh, what'll we do? What'll we do? I don't know. I don't know, Eddie, but one thing we won't do. We won't run away. We'll get the money somehow. We only had a couple of weeks. But only 48 hours. <laughs> oh, don't, please, Eddie. It, it'll be all right. Oh, don't, please, Eddie. It, It'll be all right. We're in a jam, but we'll get out of it somehow. Just don't let's get panicky. An awful lot can happen in 48 hours, Eddie. An awful lot. What floor is Mr. Carlton's apartment on? Sixth floor. Thank you. Which one is Mr. Carlton? Right over there, miss. Oh, thank you. Mr. 
Mr. Carlton in? Uh, no, miss, he's out. When will he be back? Well, I don't know, miss. Well, I'll wait if you don't mind. Uh, does Mr. Carlton expect you, miss? Yes, he does. This way, please. Hello. Hello. What time is it? Four o'clock. Oh, my goodness. I've been here since one. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were coming. I didn't know myself until about 30 seconds before I got here. An impulse? Mm, something like that. I hope you'll forgive my dropping in like this without any warning or notice. You can always drop in on me without any warning or notice. I'm deeply flattered and honored. Mm. Nice of you to say that. You see, I didn't think I meant anything to you. I wasn't even sure I'd ever see you again. Well, neither was I, but... I don't know, somehow tonight I got to thinking of you. That's funny. I was thinking of you, too. Between drinks. Can I offer you something? Oh, yes. It's rather a hard couch you picked up. Well, to tell you the truth, I was so tired I could have slept standing up. Oh, I dreamt of clocks chiming, and I smoked lots of your cigarettes. I hope you found the right brand. Oh, yes. Say, this is a swell place you have here. Oh, it's all right. Gets a bit lonely at times. Lonely? My first wife. You never told me you were married. Oh, yes, indeed. That one didn't last long enough to really count. And, um... And so you tried again? I was a glutton for punishment. That wasn't successful either. And so I keep these as reminders. Of what? Of the one thing I've learned in a long life. And what's that? The only love letter to write to a woman. Paid to the order of and fill in the name. Oh. Oh, I don't think that's true. 
Ah, I've lived longer than you have. Yeah, but I began younger. Well, here's looking at you. You said you were thinking of me tonight. What were you thinking? I was just trying to analyze what there is about you that interests me so. I think I've discovered it. What is it? You're the only woman I know who doesn't want something. You know, the very first time I saw you... Oh, well, that didn't count, you know. You were plastered that time. <laughs> yes, I guess I was. But I saw very clearly, I think. Those men you were dancing with. <laughs> you absolutely looked at them with hate in your eyes. Well, that's the way I felt about them, too. But there was something else. What? Hunger. Yes, that's it. Hate and hunger. That's what interested me so. I have felt that way myself. You know, I wondered what you were going to do when I sent you that dress. And when you returned it, I was awfully glad. I wanted you to make this trip with me. And when you said no, I was glad again. But the biggest kick of all is the fact that you haven't got your hand out always saying, give me, give me, give me. That's the one... Let's have another drink, huh? All right. You know, it's very peculiar. I've been thinking about you all day, wondering whatever became of you. I inquired for you at the Palady dance, but no one seemed to know where you were. You, were, you do like me, don't you? Well, you know I like you. Well, if you do, I want you to say it. Barbara, I like you more than that. Oh. Don't, please. I... I want to tell you why I came up here tonight. I... Well, I... I must have $5,000 before noon tomorrow. Can you let me have it? Yes, I suppose so. Do you mind? Well... To be perfectly frank, Barbara, I do. You know, it's only a loan. Yes, I... Well, it is on the level of this. Gee, I, I wouldn't have asked you if it wasn't a matter of life and death, but... You know, I'm working now, and... Well, I make quite a bit, and I'll pay you back. Ten cents a dance? That's 50,000 dances. Oh, no. I won't ask you to do that. There's something I'll miss. I thought perhaps that you liked me a little on my own account, not just my checking account. But I do. That's why I came to you. Mm. Yes. With great affection. $5,000 worth. <laughs> All right. I'll let you have the money. Oh, I'll never forget that as long as I live. Shall I come to the office? No, I'll let you have it here. Oh, well, then I'll come back later. Barbara. Do you remember our little meeting at the hotel? Do you remember our little meeting at the hotel? You led me to believe that you were a very direct sort of person. Now, since this happy little visit has developed into a business affair, I'm going to be direct with you. I'm not going to lend you the money. I'm going to give it to you. You once said that you never took something for nothing. Do you recall that? What do you think of me? Well, what does it matter? What difference does it make?
I'm awfully sorry, Barbara. So am I. This is once in your life that you'll have to take something for nothing. Because there's nothing I want from you. Only this. Who do you want the money for? Oh, please, don't ask me that. I... Well, I... I want the money for myself. Oh, no, Barbara. Come on now, tell me. What do you want it for? Or who? Well... Maybe you have a right to know. If I don't get that money within 24 hours... Somebody I know is going to prison. Somebody you know? He... He stole money from his employer. From you. From me? His... His name is... Eddie Miller. Oh, yes. I know all about that. But why should you be willing to do anything like this for, for a man like Eddie Miller? Well, he happens to be the somebody I'm married to. When did that happen? What's the difference? Well, only this. I envy Eddie Miller. If there's a woman anywhere that would be willing to do for me what you're willing to do for him, say... I'd steal five million dollars. I'll give you the money, Barbara. Oh, gee, I'll never forget you as long as I live. You're saving his life, and when you do that, you save me too. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, wait a minute. The bank doesn't open until 10. Do you want to wait here for the money? Well, I, I will if you want me to. Yes, I want you to. I mean, there's no sense of wandering around town, is there? You must be awfully tired. Gee, I am. I, I feel all in. Oh, about Eddie. Now, as long as he's paying the money back, you, you won't... Now, don't you worry about Eddie. He'll very likely come to me and ask for a raise. And probably get it. He must be a remarkable young man. I beg your pardon, sir. Did you ring? Uh, yes, Wilson. Sorry to get you up so early. Will you get breakfast ready for two, please? Very good, sir. I don't know how I'm ever going to be able to thank you. Now, don't you worry about that. Okay. Eddie! Barbara, you had me worried to death. Why didn't you come home last night? Where were you? Never mind that now. Here. What's this? The money. How much? The what? Five grand. Five grand? Where in the world is it? Never mind that now. Put it away. Gee, it had to be all or nothing, didn't it, Eddie? Yeah, yeah. I, I got to get this in the safe. The orders are due here this afternoon. Well, you better snap into it. Will you be home for dinner? Yeah, yeah, I'll be home. Two dollars, two dollars and fifty cents, three dollars, sixty dollars, sixty dollars, sixty dollars. Twenty-five cents, eight dollars and thirty cents, thirty-five dollars, two hundred and forty dollars, fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. right, Should be two forty. Fifty dollars, thirty dollars, hundred and sixty dollars, thirty-five cents, hundred and sixty dollars, sixty cents, eighty dollars, eight hundred dollars, four dollars and fifty cents, ninety-eight cents, seven fifty, seventy-five dollars, thirty-six dollars, thirty-six dollars, forty-five dollars, total eighteen forty seventy-five. All right. Thirty dollars, thirty dollars, thirty dollars three times, twenty-five fifty, six eighty. Forty-eight dollars, thirty-six dollars, forty-eight dollars, forty-five dollars. Hello, darling. Yeah, 
I'm so happy I don't know whether the dancers stand on my head. Come on, dance with me. What's the matter with you? What's this for? To die. That's what you charge for a dance, isn't it? Eddie. Keep away from me. There's just two things I want to ask you, and if then you would all to be decent and honest, I want you to tell me the truth. Where were you last night? Where did you get that money? You think I'm dumb? There's only one place you could have gotten it, from Carlton. Where did you get that money? You don't answer me, do you? Well, I'll answer for you. You were caught in last night, you got that money from Carlton. Didn't you? How do you know? What's the difference? It's true, isn't it? You come clean with me. You can't come clean. You know what clean means? Well, don't shout at me. The people will hear you across the court. Let them hear me. What difference does it make? I know you're better than I do. Shouldn't surprise them at all. Well, what difference does it make where I got the money? It isn't where you got it. It's how you got it. I would have rotten in prison to have this happen to me. Do you wonder now why I kept that marriage a secret? Do you blame me now? I was a fool. All this time you've been laughing at me. And Carlton too, I suppose. Will you laugh on the other side of his face before I throw him? You lied to me from the start. You've been lying ever since. I go and make a thief of myself on account of you and this is what happened. What are you hiding in there for? Where are you going? I don't know. I just want to get out of here. To Carlton, I suppose. Don't you dare step out of this house. Get out of my way, Eddie. You're going to stay right here and listen to what I've got to say. I've listened to you, and now you're going to listen to me. You're a coward, Eddie. You were running away from something the first time I met you. And you're a thief. You stole money from your employer. Yes, for you. You're a liar. It wasn't for me. It couldn't have been. But I could forgive you for being a liar and a thief and a coward if I loved you. I could forgive you anything. But I don't love you. I don't even think enough of you now to hate you. I'm, I'm thankful to you for bringing me down to earth where I belong. Oh, listen, Barbara, I did the best I could, and you slipped me a dime. Come on, change. I'm going to keep it as a souvenir of my great romance. <laughs> and now I'm going. Oh, no, Barbara, no, you're still my wife. Not anymore. I made a mistake, and so did you. But you'll be all right. You don't need me anymore. Barbara, Barbara, I'm not through yet. I but don't... I'm through. You don't expect a man to find out what I did and not do something about it, do you? Huh. You're not a man. You're not even a good sample. But you'll be okay. People like you usually get by. Yes, I remember now. That package has been here for a long while. How much is that? Ten cents, please. Thank you. Carlton here? Why, yes, sir. Does he expect you, sir? He certainly does. You come this way, sir.
What is it, Miller? I want to talk to you. Yes, I've been looking forward to a talk with you at the office. This isn't an office affair. Besides, I'm not working for you anymore. I've quit. Did you come up here to tell me that? No, no. I came to talk about my wife. I know she was here last night. There's none written law in this country, Carlton, and if I put a bullet for you right now, no jury in the world will convict me. What do you want? You alienated the affections of my wife, and you can't get away with it. I wish I could believe that were true. However, your wife was here last night. Yes, she spent the whole night here. Well, you're going to pay for it. You're mistaken in misjudging your wife. Ah, tell that to a jury and see what they think. They're going to pay and pay plenty. As far as your wife is concerned, there is nothing to pay. As far as you're concerned, I have paid. I gave your wife $5,000, and she gave you the money to put back into my safe. Oh, I see. She double-crossed me. She told you. But I put that money back. You've got nothing on me. I've lost my wife on account of you. Well, that may be true. What are you going to do about it? It's not my move. It's yours. What are you going to do about it? Suppose we get your wife up here, and then we'll see. I don't know where she is. She's gone. Where? I don't know. I kicked her off. Listen, Miller. Before I kick you out, let me give you a bit of advice. If you make any effort to drag her name into any sort of a scandal, I'll forget a promise I made your wife. But I put that money back. That doesn't wipe out your embezzlement. You're still a thief, Miller. She didn't want you to go to jail, and so you're not going. Wilson. Yes, sir? Mr. Miller is leaving. Very good, sir. Barbara, be your own messenger boy. Oh. Don't mind me. I just work here. Say, where you been? I've been looking all over for you. I thought you were out there in the floor dancing. Say, why don't you do something for me? If Mom's up when you get home tonight, give her a song and dance about my working overtime. It'll be delayed. Get me? I'm not going home either. Where are you going? What's the difference? You ain't interested. No, says you. I'm going with you. Oh, but it's one of those things that might not even break up until dawn. I don't care if it never breaks up. How about Eddie? Who's Eddie? Say, what's come over you? I've just taken one on the chin, and I've just come to. Hello, Miss O'Neill. May I talk to you just a minute? Sure, it looks as though you can. But you know, we're not allowed to talk to customers unless they dance. Then will you dance with me? Sure, all you need is a ticket. I have one. Oh, never mind, Rivers. Come on, I'm going to talk to you. Well, you're not very anxious to see me, are you? I told you all you needed was a ticket. Just a minute. I have a ticket. Well, what's this? Tickets for the Ile de France. Two tickets. Two tickets? Oh. I see you're going to collect interest on your money. Now, Barbara, do I rate that? No. I guess not, but... You see, if you go to Paris, you can get a divorce. And then you'll be free to marry again. Yes. I want to be there. I want to be the first one to ask you. Perhaps I'd better not wait. Will you marry me, Barbara? Or well, you might just as well say yes. Otherwise, you'll never get rid of me. Certainly a glutton for punishment. I guess we're both gluttons. And gluttons should eat. I see you've got your dinner dress on. Are you hungry? Dark. Will you have dinner with me? With a boss. <laughs> I'm sorry, Barbara, but it's against the rules. The dance, that's what they pay me. Gosh, how they weigh me down. And so 
dance a dance, pansies and rocks. 